This video was proudly made with the help of the stunning new Corsair Virtuoso SE. With unrivaled sound and mic quality, a sleek design that doesn't compromise comfort for beauty, and over 20 hours of battery life, this headset lets you do your thing, whether you're slaying bosses or making guides. Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the Minstrel's Ballad Hades Elegy, also known as Hades EX. This is the newest extreme trial made available by Patch 5.1 in Final Fantasy XIV. At first glance, the difficulty of this encounter may leave you feeling off balance, or that you've cheated death going through hell and back so many times, but stop your shrieking. This video will keep you current and out of the dark. My name is Miztech and I'll be your raid guide. The encounter begins with Hades casting Ancient Double, giving him a buff that will cause his incoming attacks to hit twice. Shadow Spread will target every single player with a thin cone attack that deals high damage. To avoid overlapping excess damage, each player should be assigned a spot around the boss. Since this attack is doubled, a second Shadow Spread attack will appear in the same area, giving all players the opportunity to avoid extra damage by moving into the safe zones created between the first set of attacks. Next, Hades will move into the center and Bad Faith will spawn two walls on either side of the boss. The direction of the spikes on the wall will determine which quadrant of the platform will be targeted by the blast. All players will need to move into the appropriate safe quadrants until the first attack goes off. Again, this attack is doubled and the opposite side of the initial attack will be targeted second. Players will need to move into the new safe zone as soon as the first attack goes off to avoid the next one. Ravenous Assault will target the primary target with a heavy hitting tank buster that applies a magic vulnerability up debuff. Since this attack will be doubled and hit twice, you can either tank swap with cooldowns or immunity through both hits. This is followed by Arcane Utterance, which will spawn either a set of red balls or blue mirrors around the platform in a set pattern. If you see the red orbs, you'll need to be on the lookout for the one missing orb on the outer ring of the pattern and position yourself in that safe zone. Each orb will explode in a large AoE circles, and players can use the markings on the ground to ensure that they're safe. The mirror pattern is a little bit trickier. You'll notice a gap in the outer ring of mirrors. However, there will also be a mirror in the middle, pointing towards the gap. Each mirror will then explode in a long column AoE from its shiny side. To dodge this pattern, players will need to move to the one safe spot formed on the outside ring of mirrors opposite the gap. Next up, Broken Faith will cover the platform with orange circles and call down two staggered sets of discs onto each orange circle that will explode in larger circles as they hit the platform. To dodge this, players can move into the circle after the first disc explodes, and then alternate from that area back into the center until the mechanic is complete. Or you can cry about uptime, stand in the center, and take two debuffs. The damage is manageable as long as your healers are ready for it. Once the two sets of discs explode, the boss will then cast the other Arcane Utterance pattern. Find the appropriate safe spot and move into it before the cast goes off. Immediately after, players will need to move into their assigned positions again to avoid overlapping the next Shadow Spread attack. This is followed by another double Bad Faith, Tank Buster, and eventual Phase and Rage. The boss will transition into the next phase once you push him below 10%, and it's possible to skip mechanics based on your raid's damage. The second phase begins with Nabrialis's shade spawning in the middle. It will begin to cast Quake 3 and deal damage based on how high its health is at the time of cast. As such, the raid will have to deal as much damage as possible to survive the incoming damage. At the same time, two sets of comets will spawn in the north and south that will rotate clockwise around the platform. These comets must each be soaked or they will explode and you will die. Assign one tank to each set and have them take each meteor with cooldowns. On top of all this, four Shadow of the Ancients will spawn and tether to the four damage dealers. After a short time, long colonial attacks will target these players dealing damage and debuffs to any player's hit. The damage dealers will need to make sure they're not actively pointing their tethers towards the tanks soaking the comets, otherwise the tanks will probably die, the comets will hit, and then the rest of you will die. Once all four comets have been soaked from each set, the two healers will be marked with these Ancient Water 3 stack up markers, and the two tanks will be targeted for Ancient Darkness AoE circles. To handle this, we assign stack groups for each healer and spread around the the boss in assigned areas. This way, everyone can still maintain uptime while satisfying the requirements of each AoE attack. As the damage goes off, Quake 3 will finish casting, dealing damage based on the boss's remaining health pool. Healers be ready to shield and heal through this damage as necessary. Next, Lahabria and Aegayorm Shades will appear and cast Fire Sphere and Blizzard Sphere respectively. These casts will place either a burning or freezing brand on you, limiting what you can take and deal damage to. Players with the Fire debuff will only be able to target 
platform, while players of the Blizzard debuff will only be able to target La Habrea. The tanks must also ensure they're tanking the shade opposite their debuff to avoid lethal damage during each mini tank buster. Lastly, the two shades must be kept apart as you destroy them. Soon after, another four Shadow of the Ancients will spawn and two Ice and two Fire Tethers will target players. To handle this, we have the two healers intercept the tethers of the opposite element from the south adds, while the two tanks grab the tethers of the opposite element in the north. The tether will eventually cause an explosion around the affected player, so make sure to avoid overlapping unnecessarily. Once the tethers explode, the two shades will cast fire and blizzard sphere again, changing everyone's debuff to the opposite element. As such, all players, including tanks, will need to adjust their targets as necessary. Once both shades are down, the Asian Prime shade will spawn and cast universal manipulation, bringing health pools down to single digits and applying debuffs on all players. The tanks and healers will be afflicted by Doom, Ancient Circle, and Cursed Shriek. To resolve Doom, these players must be healed to full or they will die. Ancient Circle creates a very large donut attack around each tank and healer. To control and create a safe zone around the boss, we assign each tank and healer to a specific cardinal point in melee range. Cursed Shriek will petrify any player looking at these four players after its duration. The damage dealers will be afflicted with Beyond Death, Off Balance, and Forked Lightning. To remove the Beyond Death debuff, damage dealers will need to take a lethal damage or they will eventually die. To handle this, they'll buddy up with a tank or healer and stand in one layer of the Ancient Circle donut attacks. The off-balance debuff will also knock back the damage dealers towards the outer edge once they get hit by Ancient Circle. Around this time, Cursed Streak is going off, so each damage dealer will need to ensure they're facing away from the gaze attacks. Before they move back into the boss, they'll need to pause a moment to drop off the final Fork Lightning AoE Blast. Once all of these debuffs are resolved, healers will need to top everyone off before the boss finishes its Blight cast, which deals high raid-wide damage and puts a spicy 30-second dot on each player. Up next, Height of Chaos will target the primary target with a heavy-hitting tank buster. Cool down and heal through this as necessary. This is followed by both healers being targeted for Megiddo Flame. You can use the same stack up assignments as before to keep things simple. Shadow Flare will deal high raid-wide damage. Ancient Eruption will target two players with large circle AoEs that will follow them for multiple hits. Any of these mechanics can be skipped if you destroy Asian Prime shade before you get to them. Once this ad is down, the boss will transition into the next phase. In this phase, Hades will remain stationary on the north side of the platform. The first attack is against the Majestic. This will call down another two sets of comets in the north and south of the platform. The two tanks can handle this in the same manner as before. Next, one healer will be marked with this large AoE circle. They'll need to move away from the group as anyone caught inside this circle will soon be scooped up and placed in jail. The group must then destroy this jail before the cast goes off. Next, again the Martyr will target each healer with a stack up marker, and each damage dealer with an ice AoE. All players will also soon be knocked away a set distance from the center of the platform. To handle this combo of mechanics, we assign specific spots for the damage dealers around the center of the platform and buddy up the tanks and healers to share the damage. Once the knockback happens, each tank and healer set will be knocked back together to share the damage, while each damage dealer is knocked safely away to avoid overlap. There is a bit of AoE damage happening during this time, so healers will need to be ready to quickly heal up before the next attack. Again, the Abyssal Celebrant will cause multiple AoE cones to radiate out from the boss, limiting the safe area of the platform. These areas will be targeted by blasts that will hit the same area three times. The two healers will be marked with stack-up markers, and two damage dealers will be targeted by large AoE circle markers and will soon drop down large puddles beneath them. To handle this combo, each healer will split in their assigned groups in the formed safe zone on the far outer edges of the platform. The tanks and unaffected damage dealers will stack with them for all three hits of damage. The two damage dealers marked for AoE will move to the back of the inner safe zones near the edge of the platform. They'll need to drop all three of their puddles in the available safe zone before returning to the boss. Next up, Dark Seal will cause growing orbs to spawn around the platform in one of two possible patterns. Depending on the orientation of these orbs, safe zones will form directly in front of the boss and either to the direct left or right of the center right in front of Hades' face. Hades will then cast Poly Demon's Purgation or Shadow Stream. Purgation will deal damage to the entire platform except for one strip directly in front of him. To dodge this, players will need to move directly in front of the boss. Shadow Stream will blast the platform directly in front of the boss. To dodge this, players will need to move to either the left or right side, whichever side has more room available based on the growing orbs. These mechanics will repeat until the boss is brought below 30% and the next phase transition begins. The raid will need to handle an active time maneuver here, so be ready to spam those buttons. In the final phase, Hades will cast Dark Current. 
event. This will spawn two sets of Exaflare-like attacks from both sides of the platform. To easily handle this, players can move to the edge of the platform next to an incoming current marker. Since these currents move in a straight line, you can simply move into the lane behind a departing marker to be safe. Since there are two sets, make sure you move behind the second set of markers as well. Immediately after, the boss will cast Gigantomachy, dealing high raid-wide damage. This is immediately followed by Quadra Strike, a double hit of damage on the entire raid. Healers will need to be very careful here, shielding and topping off players as quickly as possible. This is followed up by two towers spawning in the east and west. Assign one tank to soak the damage of each tower with cooldowns. Finally, another Quadra Strike will hit the raid, dealing damage and applying a very dangerous dot on each player that lasts a significant amount of time. The next Dark Current sets will spawn and be handled in the same manner. Healers be aware that the dot is still ticking during this time, and all players should be extra careful in avoiding the currents to minimize damage. This is followed by the same AoE, tank mechanics, and raid-wide bleed until the boss begins to cast one final Gigantomachy. You'll need to destroy him before this cast goes off or you will die. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Up next, we'll dive into the new Alliance raid, The Copied Factory. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.